In this video, we're going to look at two different ways to apply a carpal flexion bandage. The first is on this little dog. Whenever I'm applying a sling, I like to make a loop with the tape. Rather than just wrapping the tape around the metacarpals, I create a loop with the tape. After that, we're going to go up over the radius, placing the carpus in about a 90 degree angle. Don't overdo it. It can be uncomfortable. And all you're doing with your tape is a figure eight style maneuver as you go between the radius and back down towards the metacarpals. It's nice to have the tape sticking directly on the skin because then it stays there. Never make this tight. Our next patient is going to be a golden retriever, so much bigger patient. Jennifer is going to apply the carpal flexion bandage the way she likes to do it by actually first bandaging the limb and with a bigger dog I think that that is also a good idea because there's you're gonna to have to place more tape on this patient so she starts with the stirrups and some cast padding and then she's just going to apply her cling adding a little bit of pressure and it's just to hold everything in place and note that she's going about midway up the radius with her I'm going to call it preliminary bandage. The purpose of the carpal flexion bandage is just to prevent the pet from weight bearing on the limb. This doesn't mean they have a problem with their carpus. It means we don't want them to weight bear on that forelimb. For whatever reason, whatever the problem may be in that forelimb. Now she is starting to apply the carpal flexion bandage. So again, she starts with a loop rather than wrapping around the radius. She is she just created a loop to sling the radius. Notice how as she comes around in that figure eight fashion, like just like we did with the little dog, notice how she's starting close to the carpus both on the radius and the metacarpal and as she keeps on making her loops she is I'm going to use the word fanning out a little bit from the carpus itself so she's going a little further distal on the metacarpals and a little further proximal along the radius always doing her figure eight with a small twist in the tape. So we have that fanning motion. What this does is it just um, in this larger dog allows the pressure to be a little bit better distributed over the radius and the, metacar the metacarpals. She's finishing by just doing a direct loop around and this is just to add a bit of security to the job that she's already done. These larger dogs they do seem to easily find ways of getting out of slings. They, they're just stronger and these slings I'm sure are very frustrating for them to wear and so it's just natural that they want to get their joint out of the sling. She's finishing up with the protective layer and the purpose of the protective layer is to protect the sling. Never leave a carpal flexion sling on for more than 10 to 14 days and my preference is 10. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this helpful.